Welcome back to the Chapel Grove Church Podcast, the Bible-centered show that focuses on searching the scriptures to find answers to common spiritual questions. To learn more, go to chapelgrovechurch.com. My name is Trevor Calvert. I'm a member at Chapel Grove Church of Christ, and I'll be your host for today's episode. And now, on to the show. Have you ever caught yourself pondering the deeper questions of life? Like, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? What's this whole experience of life really about? If so, you're certainly not alone. Mankind constantly seeks to find answers to these questions, as it has for millennia. There was once a man who set out on his own quest to solve life's greatest mysteries. His name was Solomon, the son of King David in the Old Testament, the same David that slayed the giant Goliath. David reigned on the throne of Israel for 40 years, and near the end of his life, he named Solomon his successor. Like his father, Solomon also served as king of Israel for 40 years. We get a glimpse into his life through the Old Testament writings that are attributed to him, such as Proverbs and the book which bears his name, Song of Solomon. But perhaps among the most profound and thought-provoking of his works is the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon reaches a point in his life when he ponders the deeper meaning of mortal existence and he launches into a series of experiments, if you will, to test various theories to see if he can determine the answer. We can think of Ecclesiastes as the research summary or lab report of all these experiments. I still remember the seven steps of the scientific method from my seventh grade science class, don't you? Step number one, state the problem. Step number two, gather information on the problem. Step three, form a hypothesis. Step four, perform experiments to test the hypothesis. Step number five, record and analyze data. Step six, state a conclusion. Step number seven, repeat the work. Interestingly, Solomon's writings show that he follows a similar pattern of thought as he seeks to solve these mysteries. He states the problem immediately in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He also checks off step number two by expounding on the problem through various examples, showing how futile the labor of man is as he works hard day after day, but to no end. He points out how generations continue to pass away, but the earth remains unchanged. He points out the monotonous nature of the rising and falling of the sun and how essentially nothing ever changes. He says, there is nothing new under the sun. Basically, Solomon is saying in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, What's the point of this endless cycle that we call life? He then forms various hypotheses or theories as to what the purpose of our humble existence could be. In chapter 2, he tests the first hypothesis by saying, Come now, I will test you with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. He says, Maybe pleasure is the answer. He then begins to list all the pleasures of life he sought after, drinking wine, building houses, planting vineyards, gardens, and orchards. He acquired herds and flocks that were greater in number than anyone who had ever lived in Jerusalem. He had servants, a workforce to accomplish all the work, silver and gold, singers and musical instruments. He even says in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10, whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. Well, what was the result of all this pleasure? Solomon tells us plainly in verse 11, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no prophet under the sun. He even goes so far as to say in verse 17 that he hated life because he saw it as a meaningless pursuit. Solomon analyzes another theory in chapter 4, that of selfishly working for oneself. As you can probably guess, Solomon says that this too was worthless. But what about fame and being noticed and remembered? Solomon addresses this idea as well, but it comes up short. He basically says that those who seek to be popular are wasting their time because they will soon be forgotten when the next person comes to take the spotlight. Similarly, Solomon speaks of the vanity of gain and honor in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. It should be noted that Solomon was more than qualified to make these conclusive statements. In 2 Chronicles chapter 9 verse 22, the Bible says, King Solomon was richer and wiser than any other king in the world. The Bible details the great wealth and power he attained in his lifetime. So Solomon, after performing his own experiments, as well as analyzing the lives of others, makes these conclusions. The meaning of life can't be found in seeking pleasure, in amassing great wealth. Purpose can't be found in selfish pursuits or in fame or power. So what then is the meaning of life? 
Well, Solomon gives us the answer in the final chapter of Ecclesiastes. Listen to his words in chapter 12, verses 9 through 14. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these, of making many books there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. And there you have it. The wisest man to ever walk the face of the earth, second only to Jesus Christ, gives us the meaning of life. Solomon is basically saying to you and I, take my word for it. I've seen it all and I've done it all. Save yourself the trouble, grief, and wasted years. The purpose of life is this. Fear God. Keep His commandments. You may be thinking, well, what exactly does it mean to fear God? Does that mean we must literally be afraid of God? The answer is no. To fear God means to give Him our utmost respect and reverence. But this will be difficult for us to do until we understand more deeply who God is. We gain this understanding by studying the Bible, which is God's written word to us. The Bible is also, of course, where we discover the commandments that God has given to us. So in short, the path to a fulfilling and meaningful life starts with reading the Bible, gaining a better knowledge of God, giving Him our greatest respect, and keeping His commandments. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more, go to chapelgrovechurch.com. Lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. It helps others find us and also lets us know how we're doing. Until next time, take care.